This is Jeremiah. He's back on fire. We're on 60 whatever here. We're headed to 70 here um, videos on this year's work. Now, beauty dragged into the beginning of the year, and we, we did some, uh, uh, I did a little bit of review over uh, beauty, and we talked about how heaven is the source of beauty. Purity and intelligence are the source of beauty. If you're an artist and you paint, God gave you the ability to organize colors and to use them and enjoy them and make a design. He is the one responsible for you having the ability to create beautiful things and enjoy them. Even though you're not pure, you're enjoying purity. That was one of the main points of last year. Was that you're enjoying purity right now. Your body, your, your, the light, the color you see, it all came from absolute purity and intelligence. And a lot of love. That's what created what you're looking at. And if you don't pay attention to Mr. Beautiful, you're going to lose your beauty. That was one of the main issues last year of why would, Paul said, why would you neglect so great a salvation? Why are you going to neglect and not, and not give God the glory due to his name and enjoy what you're enjoying forever? When I went to college, they told me that this book by Darwin is the truth and everything else is not true. That was a physics astronomy book I bought. So the, the, the school, the author, Darwin, here they are taking glory away from God for his wonderful creation and his hard work, and they're basically spurning it. So where are they going to go? They're going to go into darkness because they, 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 they encountered light, they encountered color, they encountered design. They saw babies like we just put online here uh, of the wonderful high-definition pictures of babies in the womb, which are absolutely amazing pictures. Uh, okay, you saw that, and you still had to write a book that what you're looking at, God didn't make it? You're looking at somebody's artwork, and you're telling them right in their face that they didn't make the painting. How is the painter going to feel? Huh? I, 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 I know a lot of famous, uh, uh, semi-famous musicians. Um, uh, Marvin, Gade, Marvin Gaye's guitar player is a friend of mine. What a talented musician. I know people who are very talented. I don't think I'm that talented as a musician. I, I think I just barely row the boat, but uh, we'll let that go. But it, 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 Can you imagine that guy spending all these years working on music, and then somebody comes over to his house and they go, I want you to, I want you to give my son guitar lessons, but I'm going to give you $5 an hour. What they're doing is, is they're dismissing your work. I'm very careful when I talk about people's input, their, their art, their music, to, 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 if I have any criticism, to, to give them a positive uh, note too. I said, you know, I, I, there's a singer I know who, when I first heard his, his, his singing, I didn't like it that much because it was like a style. He wasn't singing in key all the time. So I, 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 I said, I really don't like your voice that much. And I kept listening to the CD, and then I started liking it because I got used to his style. He had a style. He had, he had a way of bending his notes, and he was consistent with it like bending guitar notes. So after, after a while, I was like, I, you know what? I kind of like your voice a little bit now. We have to be slow and careful in criticizing people. If you have constructive criticism, make sure you talk about how nice they, 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 what, what, they, they, they did something really nice you like, but you would prefer that they do this a little different. That's called diplomacy, negotiations.
Every now and then, uh, uh, as a bad habit, we might let it slip out where we're a little too rough on people. Okay? And then that, that, that goes around the word kindness, doesn't it? Jeremiah is here. He's surrounded by work. I'm very happy with the rapture. Of course, we will be going into the rapture, rapture next week. Uh, I do it two or three times a month because it is the big issue now. I will probably add a little bit of Babylon in there and in times conversation pertaining to Luke and Matthew, uh, a lot of Daniel and book 66. That there are other references that uh, Peter and other, and, other uh, uh, and Paul, they sneak in on the end times and so forth. And they're all, it's a lot of work. If you add, if you add all of the uh, references to in times things, you have, you have a pretty big book on your hands. And I have to go through it again, even though I went through it on the previous playlist here, I have to go through it again. Because I want you to get a really good, uh, a good representation of the end times, okay? Daniel saw the end of the world from the end of the world all the way to his day. Every ruler, every basic government head, he saw them on animals and so forth, okay? For instance, the leopard is Greece. So all of this is a lot of work for me, but it's a labor of love. And, uh, and you must love God. We don't keep track of what we do, but we know that we must be active in loving God. That's demanded of you to love God and love works. We don't keep track of those works because that's called a cult and a twister donut. We're not twister donuts here. We don't keep track of what you do, but we watch you and we appreciate what you do. I'll say that one more time because some, some of you are getting confused. The Protestant doctrine is we don't really follow you around. We don't write down what you do in general. It's between you and God, he's your master, and I'm not. That's Protestantism. However, it doesn't mean that we can't be like James and look at you and go, Hey, dude, you were supposed to clean the room. Nothing wrong with that. That's not a cult. I've had people tell me it's a cult for me to tell somebody that they need to clean what they say they're going to clean. That's not a cult. A cult is when you say you deserve something from God. And you deserve to be a God. Like the Mormons say. You're going to be a God. With your own planet. So they're wrong on two counts. You're not going to be a God. And there's no such thing as a planet. Here's the point. The point is, is that, okay... Christianity is, I can keep track of you, but I'm not really keeping track of you. That's the point. Somebody comes over here to paint my house. It's not self-righteous or I belong to a cult because I keep track of what they do. That's not, that has nothing to do with a cult and, 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 and trying to earn points from God. I'm just keeping track of what you did. That's not self-righteousness or anything. You said you're going to paint? Do a good job. I'm still a Protestant Christian who, who, who doesn't, I don't follow people around and tell them that they need to do this and do that to be saved. But if I, but if I, if I hire you, there's nothing wrong with me watching you do what, you, well, do what I hired you for. I got that from some people in, in my lifetime as a Protestant. You're keeping track of me. You're 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 you're, you're self-righteous. You're you you're you're quick to judge, which means pre, pre, you're you're uh, you're just quick to judge. The word is what judgmental. That's what it means. The, the word judgmental. It means that you're quick to condemn people and you're out of line. You should be more merciful. So when people come over to your house and they say they're going to paint the house, it doesn't matter if they do a sloppy job or not. 
That's what they're saying. I can go out in the world and run red lights, and it's okay because the police officer should be merciful to me so I can run red lights. That's what they're saying. We just looked at that in Grace in Jude, book 65, right here. For people are turning the grace of God into a party, which isn't grace anymore. I might run a red light, and the police officer said, I saw you run a red light. I'm not going to give you a ticket. I, I, I saw that you realized when you got halfway through, and I'm not going to give you a, a ticket. I had a police officer tell me I made a left turn. He said, I don't want to give you a ticket, but my boss, I think he might be around the corner. I have to write you a ticket. He wanted to give me mercy. That's what mercy is. You did something wrong, and you didn't get punishment for it. And we're not confused here about things. I'm not. Let's, let's say one more note about Catholicism. Do, do you realize the, 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 the psychological, um, the, the, the grammatical, I got an F in class with, the, with these Catholics on many, on, on many a note. One of them is, is the word mercy. Mary said, in Luke, she said, God has mercied us again, calling herself an Israelite. Now, she says, they, they, they have that so-called prayer, with, uh, uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, Hail Mary, full of grace. Now that's a little tricky because that can get a little complicated. However, what's black and white here is when she said, and I want you to pay attention because the word grace is a little different than mercy. When she said, God is having mercy on us. What did she just say, Jeremiah? She just said that she's a sinner. Okay, that's, that's not difficult to conclude from the simple grammar, okay? Now, how many people who, who are in, in Italy right now or around the world who worship this woman and she, de and she declared herself as a sinner, okay? Which means they don't know fourth to eighth grade grammar in what they're, what they're reading. And, 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 of course, at their defense, to give them a little bit of leeway, uh, we can defend them a little because they don't really have the King James Bible like we do. Most Catholics don't have Bibles. They go and read pamphlets. They have little saints saying, Hail Mary, Hail Mary, and they read them. They have a little doll of a woman in the corner and stuff. This is all paganism, and it's bad news. And there's a place around the corner here where they do that, right around the corner here. They have a, a Mary's flying across the room, and they worship her. They're breaking what commandment, Jeremiah? Number 50, 49, 33? No, they're breaking the number one commandment. Ouch. This building is not a, it's not a Mickey Mouse uh, twister donut. This is a major twister donut. This is a major perversion of what God wants. Thou shalt have no other gods besides me. I am a jealous God. Well, so, you're, so you're worshiping a woman over here, and you tell me when I meet you at, at, at school or, or at the coffee shop that everything is copacetic, and everything is not copacetic. It's not cool. What did Israel get in trouble with the most? In the first 39 books in the Bible. In the first 39 books in the Bible, or, or the, uh, huh? what, what is the Old Testament? What is the number one sin they had? da 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 Da, 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 da. Okay, it's idolatry, worshiping another god. It's 
So what they're doing around the corner here is not Mickey Mouse where, where it's, like, oh, it's okay, Jeremiah, you're being a little hard on them. You know, okay, listen, you, you, you want to get in line? Get in line. Make the tree good or make the tree evil. Okay, well, we don't have enough time for you. You, you people who, are, who are, are all over the place. I don't have time for you. I have some time for you according to the, the will of the Lord, but after a while it's like, okay, that's enough. Don't bring, don't bring your doll in my, in, my, in my room. Don't bring your doll in my house. What you're doing is, is, is egregious. It's not a misdemeanor. It's a felony. For you to say that, that, that you're saved by what you do is a felony. Now, we Christians, we hold on to sound doctrine there. And let's get into some down, sound doctrine right now. Hold on a minute. I have some water. I can't see it. I think it's okay. I, I'm, I'm doing some stuff in here, some distilling. Jeremiah, you are on fire, sir. That is a correct observation. Your conclusion is, as we used to say back in the day, right on. Let's talk about mercy just a little bit more before we go. We're talking about number eight in April's Matrix going into May, okay? That's what I'm doing right now. Grace, mercy, peace, and rest. And the two big issues right now are grace and mercy. Peace and rest are later. We're focusing on and number eight here in, in, in and it, where we're headed in May, I'm giving you a head start here. We haven't even fully gotten into number one through seven here. Covenant, sound doctrine, living bread, wisdom, faith, hope, and agape. But we're adding eight here now, which is what, Jeremiah? Which is grace and mercy. Let's talk about mercy a little more. Because they basically mean, they basically mean the same thing. Grace and mercy mean good is coming to you, and you don't deserve it. That's what both of them mean. They, they, they share the same cognate. You get something you don't deserve. But they're differentiated. One is you're getting good things you don't deserve. One is you're not getting punishment for what you deserve. That's mercy. They're interchangeable, obviously, because you're getting some good you don't deserve. I, I just got something good from God, and I don't deserve it. The Catholics and a lot of people, they're contradicting simple biblical grammar, which is the word mercy means you never deserve what you get. Therefore, how can you try to earn something? Because the word mercy means God knows you and he's shining it on. That's what it means. So why would you try to, to, to build something that you can't build? You, you can never escape God looking at you through the eyes of grace and mercy. You can't escape it. So why try to build something that you can't build? When you go to the throne of grace, it's always the throne of grace. It's not the throne of grace and 10% of what you did. Mormons believe that you headed to heaven because it's 50% of what you did and 50% of grace. Some of them believe that. And we Protestants who are teaching this red letter King James Philadelphia uh, parchment here, uh, we know that I can never come to God and tell him I did something and I deserve anything. Never. That's, that, that, that's what justifies the word heresy or damnable. The word damnable starts to come into play. Why? Because it's a lie. And what, what happens to you when you believe a lie? Look, Just look at Adam and Eve, your grandparents. Okay? And, and just, let's get back to mercy for a moment. He, uh, Mary said God has mercied us again. And she uses us, we, okay? 
Simple grammar is saying, if you're paying attention, and th this is not advanced stuff. It's like, what I might watch Sherlock Holmes tonight. It's like when Sherlock talks to Dr. Watson. He tells him, dude, in American terminology, you're not paying attention. You're spacing out again, bro. You're supposed to be an assistant detective, and you're spacing out laughing and giggling, and you're capricious, and you're having a great time. And, and you're still my good friend, but you're not a very good detective. That's what he tells him over and over again. You're my dear friend, but you're not necessarily a very good detective. Because you're not thinking. And it irritates me, but that's just the way it is. You're my friend. I had a Catholic friend. I was doing the same thing to him in college. Very nice guy. From Guatemala. And I would mention to him, why are you wearing a bent cross upside down or whatever, dude? Don't you realize that you're dealing with, 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 with the flames of hell when you're, when you're frequenting this building, dude? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I said, look, you're a good friend of mine. You're a very good, you're a very nice person, and you're just, you're just, just wonderful. We used to hang out at the beach a lot and get sugar water and soda pop and, and chips and stuff and go to the beach, and, and it was wonderful to, you know, of course, go to the beach. You can see I like the beach right here, but here's the point. The point is he was, in ser he was on very serious, dangerous turf. That's the point. So I showed him mercy and grace. Because he's worshiping a woman, probably. He said he wasn't, but I think he was. And here's my point. He, so that means he's practicing something that is an abomination to God. And yet, I didn't condemn that man. We're here to help people. We're not, I'm not, I'm not as, a, as the word I just said, judgmental, quick to condemn people, because I preach righteousness. If I tell you not to run a red light, that's not preaching self-righteousness. Don't run the red light. It's a good idea. And if you ran the red light, you knock on my door, and you come in and go, you know, Jeremiah, I just ran a red light. And I said, well, you know what? You got to be, you're going to have to be more careful. I'm not going to grab my friend, put chains on him, and take him down to the police department. If he got away with it and he's serious about not doing it again, we're going to shine it on. That's what mercy is. I'm going to shine it on, bro. One of my favorite sayings in the 60s, I'm an old dude, by the way. I'm older than ice water. And in, in, in the 60s and early 70s, the hippies used to say things like, shine it on, bro. Shine it on, dude. What they were saying was, you're still my friend. You drop the ball, forget about it. And that's what we do to each other in church. We go to church, uh, somebody, somebody hurts my feelings, somebody says some words they shouldn't say, and I'm not, I'm not going to attack them. I'm going to say, hey, dude, dude, you're being a little rude and unkind. I'm sorry, dude. You know what? Uh, and, and I'll tell him, dude, shine it on, bro. I'm merciful, you know. That was one of the good things about the hippie movement in the United States because the hippie movement was not totally divorced from Christian principles. Okay? Christian principles are what make peace in this city. If you're a Peruvian Indian, uh, something might happen to you, uh, like snap, crackle, pop, and, it's, and it won't be good. Because the neighbors believe that hurting people is a badge of honor. The beliefs, the beliefs we have around here, that's what makes peace. Salt makes peace. Rules make peace. People having a desire to do something wrong and then controlling themselves. That's the word meekness. So all this is good, isn't it? Jeremiah, you're on fire, boy. You're not messing around, sir. We were going to get into the hymns. I'm going to have to shut them down for the day. We have to start getting into these hymns and going through some of these words because it's, it's more additional study for us. I'm surrounded by work here and study. I'm very happy with the, with the rapture lesson here. It, it's, it, it, for some of you out there, you're going to know a lot about the rapture and the basics in a short time flat. 
and I'm happy with that. This matrix we have here is coming along beautifully. I think so. We started referencing the old playlist, which means we're really going to... You put all this together, and what, what do you have? Uh, doing what God wants you to do. Okay, uh, parable of the sword. Uh, the father telling us, hear ye him. Okay, we're doing it. Daddy said, listen to the son. That's what we're doing. Obedient to the gospel. You were told to love God. People who love God, study. That's what that means. I use my parents all the time here because we're going back to basics and love that, that I know that love doesn't run its mouth all the time. It actually works. It, get, it gets the job done. Love will prioritize you. I know that boots on the ground. A lot of people don't know that because they haven't experienced it. All they know is affection, more or less. I know God's agape kind of love. I know what it is. It's not I take care of you today and I see you next month. Although that may be good for you, that's not my point. My point is that that's not really love. No way. I love you, Billy. I'll see you next year. I'll help you out next year. Bye. You're on your own. Take it easy. Love ya. That's poo poo. That's not love. It's affection, and, and 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 we can appreciate it, part time affection or whatever. But it's not love, is it? You answer the question. You draw your own conclusions. Uh, uh, to me, it's quite obvious that if somebody doesn't really take care of you very well, they don't love you. They have affection for you, but they don't really love you. We know God loves us. We can look at Jesus Christ on the cross. We already know that. We have evidence for that. He goes all the way. God goes all the way. He doesn't go halfway. You know. Hey, uh, hey Jeremy, you hungry? Jeremiah, I'm hungry. Okay, here's a carrot. Here's a carrot and, 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 and some peas. Enjoy yourself. That's a Thanksgiving dinner. Now, you have had a Thanksgiving dinner like me. I had a wonderful mother. I know that's not a Thanksgiving dinner, and you're Mickey Mousing. I know what high love is. What is that, Jeremiah? That's 1.1 in this ministry. Right now it's 7.1 in our matrix for this month. It's 7.1. It's high, deep, real love. That's what, that's what agape means. The Bible says that God loves you with an everlasting love. He's not Mickey Mouse lover. That's, what, that's what's so wonderful about our God, is that he's not Mickey Mouse on love. He won't show up today and say, Hey, Jeremiah, how you doing, man? What's going on, dude? Let me help you do something. I'll see you next month. You're on your own. You know, see ya. Uh, okay, bro. If you're drowning, I can't help you. I'm over here, dude. You know, hey. Woo! Which is American kind of love, isn't it? Yeah, sure. This is, people don't love you with Abraham Lincoln kind of love nowadays. The people are different. People don't write each other letters anymore. They just talk on the phone. Yeah, I'll do that, man. Hang up the phone. Oh, I forgot what I told you. You know, the phone's too easy of a communication device. You, you can forget what you said. Huh? Yeah, that's right. I had somebody tell me they were going to write me some letters. They haven't written one letter. Because all we do as Americans, historically in the past hundred years, since we've been under the influence of Macy's Day Parade, plasticism, uh, you know, adultery, whatever, America's turned into this kind of a hell hole where everybody just talks to each other and says, how you doing, Frank? And I get ready to tell you how I'm doing, and you, and you walk away.
It's kind of an aggregate psychology uh, of the demographic here, isn't it? Yes, it is. I had somebody borrow money from me. I'm not thinking about that. Somebody borrow money from me and call it. I'll pay you back. I never saw that guy again. And then when I saw him, he walked away and so forth. I didn't attack the guy or whatever. That's, that's, what, that's how we kind of treat each other. That's, it's the American way, isn't it? It sure is. Unfortunately, Abraham Lincoln types, you know, William Penn types, uh, the Pilgrim types, they're not really here anymore, unfortunately. That prototype is gone. Unfortunately, for the most part. I have one more session here, and we're going to get into the, the matrix. I'm bouncing around because I want to talk about mercy and put boots on the ground and, 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 and let you know that mercy is, like they said in New York years ago, they used to say things like, uh, uh, well, the hippie said, forget about it. No, the, no, the hippies said, shine it on. And in New York years ago, they used to say, forget about it. If, an, if, if you had an Italian friend and he did something that, that, that you didn't appreciate, and he said, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Which, what would you say? Forget about it. That's where you learn to forgive people. Which is a big part of Christianity. It's one of the cornerstones of our... Covenant and sound doctrine. You have to eat that lifestyle. It's called living bread. You have to eat these ideas and you have to live by them. And one of them is, forget about it. Or, or, or the hippies. Shine it on, bro. Shine it on, man. I know who you are. I know what you did. You know, I, I forgive you for it, basically. Can we move on? Don't worry about it. I'll be right back with the last segment. Jeremiah is on fire. 